Hey, how's everybody doing today? Okay, I'm back for a short video. The video I've been debating on doing for quite a while. It's regarding the wind wing hardware whether it's the F-18 throttle setup or the F-16, the DDI's, the UFC, um, the, whole, the whole setup pretty much. There's an application called SimApp Pro that comes with this and there's some things that you can use with this application to make setting up your game if you're playing DCS a whole lot better and a whole lot easier. So I'm gonna open the app and go over a few things. I really wish there was something like this out there that I could find at the time. Um, everything was kind of limited when I started. So, like I said, I've been always thinking about doing one myself. So, take a shot at something. We'll take a shot at it, see how it works out, and I hope it helps someone out. If you do like this video, don't forget to give me a like and a thumbs up. It's all free, none of it hurts, and it really helps the channel. See you in a second. Okay, we're back, folks. Anyways, as I said in the last part of this video, once you purchase your hardware, whether you get the full F-18 setup as far as the DDIs, the UFCs, the HUD, all that stuff goes, or you just get a throttle or just a joystick, you're going to have to get a program which is called SimApp Pro. And basically, you go over to the WinWing site, you have to sign up there and you have to be online when you're using this. It, you, you'll create an account and you have to stay connected in order for it to continue its updating. So basically you're gonna download it, install it, come over to your window, open it up, and this is what you're gonna get. Basically, we'll go to the main screen. It's gonna show you every piece of wind wing hardware that you have. So my three DDIs are MFDs and my throttle and my throttle base, throttle grip and throttle base. When I first started out, I didn't really know how to use the program too good because there's not a lot of information out there at all on how to use the functions in here. So that's why I'm doing this video, to maybe give at least some people a pretty good idea on how they can do things. And there's a couple of ways that you can assign your buttons and your switches your throttle and sliders, whatever you may be using, to the hardware. If the way I use it is I use profiles. So anyways, under these tabs, you have different things. If you have, um, I guess this is for virtual mapping. I don't have that. This is for your MFDs. Now, when you have MFDs, the, the three displays or the two displays, whatever you may have chosen, when you restart your computer, you always have to Okay, it's kind of hard to... There's, there's another application you need, and it's called Display Link. It's this program right here. You're going to open your window, and you have to take your three monitors, your small MFDs, and you take them out of landscape and put them in portrait, and then you drop them. They have to be underneath here, okay? So you get all three of them, basically. You can see what I'm doing there. And then you just reassign them into portrait so we're not gonna get crazy into that right now I guess that's close enough anyways we'll find out so they have to be in portrait and they have to be all underneath if you leave them on the side like that they won't line up with your planes displays the, the displays on your front panel on, in your plane and you, you, it, you won't see a map you, you won't see your weapons config or uh, any of that stuff so long story short if you're in a game and <clears throat> excuse me, if you're in a game and you close out the game, as long as the computer stays running, everything's good. If you restart your computer, you have to go back here step by step and go through each one of these settings. It takes about 30 seconds once your monitors are lined up. It's really, really easy. I'm not doing this video on that whole thing. I'm going to do that another time. I just wanted to touch base on it. But basically, you just go through each one of these steps. You hit apply. Now, each one of these steps has a different thing to it. This is your game screen, so that's going to be your monitor that your game's on. You select that. This is going to be, this screen right here is going to be what they call one camera and three camera. A lot of people had problems 
I did as well, figuring out what they meant by one camera and three cameras. This is your main display. This is if you're using three, like a lot of the race car sims that I see, they have a main in the front, a left and a right on the side. That's what you would use this box for. Then you hit apply. Your last one will be over here. Your displays will be showing down under here. You hit apply. And then the very last step is going to be down here. And you're going to see numbers on each one of your display that you just have to line up with the application. It's pretty simple, self-explanatory, but we're going to get back to the beginning here. All right. So this is the thing is assigning buttons and switches. If you, if you own multiple planes, it might be easier to try to keep all of your configurations. You, you know, you can manually do it, select buttons and switches that you want yourself and move it from the 15 to the 16 to the 18. This way it's easier to remember because the way I do it, I mainly fly the 18 all the time, and occasionally I fly the F-16. I have some other planes, but those are my two favorites. What you have to do is come over to key binding. The thing about WinWing's SIMAP Pro program or application is you can go to any one of these planes and say, okay, we'll go over to where it says WinWing Orion, throttle base, and handle. You're going to highlight that and say you're picking, are you going to be using the F-16. On this side, on your right side of the screen, see, you can see over here, I'll explain this in a minute. On the right side of your screen, these are profiles that have been down uploaded to SimApp that people put in there, and they give you a small description. People upload their profiles, and this was the thing I was worried about, was downloading something from there and it having like a spyware or something in there, but I did contact Win Wing with an email, and I ran that by them and they said this application is scanned for any type of spyware viruses and whatnot and i imagine it would be i mean it's not like it's a small company this company that designs this application they make it for win-wing but they also make it for a lot of other bigger companies that does it, that do multiple things so long story short you can read through these profiles like this one right here binding for f-18 throttle handle this one right here says for the F-18. This one right here says as close as possible. Basically, what this guy's saying is everything on his throttle, he copied as exactly as close as possible to the F-16 or the F-18. Let's click on that one. So we go over to the Hornet. And I finally got up uh, after talking to them and reading the email, I finally got up the courage and said, oh, all right, let me give it a shot and hope nothing happens. Well, Actually, it worked out fine. I ended up clicking on a couple of them. I tried some different variations. They were pretty much identical. I picked one with a really high number. Like, I think, yes, I tried the 1451, and it was pretty good. It was just almost just the way I wanted it. But then I ended up trying this one right here, real F-18 throttle for Orion 2. And that one was pretty much on the money with every button and switch. So on your throttle... It says, you know, master switch, so on. You, you get what I'm saying. When you go into your DCS and you look under your controls, everything lined up perfect. So basically what you do, you click on it, it'll download, it'll show up over here on the left side of your screen, and you hit run. Go back into your settings and go through them all in the game, see what's there, see if you like it, and see if you need to change something. I changed a couple things like my, um, like my zoom and one of my other camera thing for the harrier i changed one of the sliders over to be able to operate the the engines on the side it just different things you it, it, people even use this for let's say like warbirds um let's look at something what do i have the 47 uh the 51 yes let's see if they yeah see there's even one a couple there for the p51d what we got here there's a map layout for the vegan. So it, it, it does the work for you. That's what I'm trying to say. It, it's really, really, it's really worth it. I mean, I don't, I don't regret using it. If you're using the panels, this was like, let me tell you something. When you get, when you, if you buy, if you buy the Top Gun setup and you get all the panels, the HUD, the UFC, everything, you're going to have like 300 buttons that you have to assign. And I mean, you got to go into your game 
and you've got to go through each one. If you use this, you click on one of these. These guys have already done it. Look at this one. This is the one I used right here. No, I used this one right here, the F-18 UFC UHD, the HUD, and it was pretty much 100%. This one's new. I haven't seen this one there before. I don't know how long he's been around, but he's saying he's got it 100% correct, and he's got a 594 download. There's also a number on there, and you can see how many people have used it, so that kind of tells you that you know, it's pretty good to go. Okay, so now that we've covered that much, even if you have, okay, even if you have, like, I have a Verpal joystick, I have the F14, the F16, the F18 grip, and the Verpal base. It shows up on, under a game controller over here. I've never used it to assign anything to. I, I haven't even really found anything for it, but I'm sure Verpal's app is maybe a little bit similar as far as their base. Basically, all you're going to be doing is your pitch and roll. So, I mean, it, it's in, in the couple buttons that are on your handle. That takes manually a couple of minutes. So I just wanted to do this video and go through a few of these things, hoping that it would answer some questions that I had when I first got this stuff. Because like I said, I spent a few weeks racking my brains trying to get stuff set up online, reading what this button does. What, what, what does this mean? What, what, you know, what does that do? And believe me, this was a lifesaver. This was a serious, serious lifesaver, especially when it came to like the HUD and the displays every one of those little buttons on there they're all assigned somewhere this guy's got ha, this guy really has a lot look at this guy has over 3,000 downloads so he must have a really really good ddi left and it does tell you ddi left ddi right and this would be the center i don't know why they don't all line up they're they're separated by different things it doesn't really matter that much it just would make more sense if they were all in a row in order but we don't always get what we want do we so other things that you can do in this application you can go to your settings you can look at what the updates are as far as software updates you can go back over here you can go to device you can test every button and switch so basically you get the idea how that works you can change your backlighting. You can go from, on the switches, you can go to different modes. You can go to disable. You can go to switch mode, or you can go to, um, what do they call that other mode? I don't know, I don't know why it's saying disable, but because everything's working. Um, oh, maybe because I'm not in the game. So like if you go to switch mode, yeah, it goes to button mode, and then back to, this is a rocker on the throttle handle. So it's more of a digital smooth mode, switch mode. That'll have to be your preference. And sometimes you have to change those because some things work with a switch, some things work with another type of binding. What else comes with this? Your calibrations. I've never really bothered to do all that in here. I went through it once at the very beginning. Didn't have to really do it again. Your firmware updates. What you have to do is come over here and you look at firmware version. This is what's in there now. So you have the handle is version 1.33. The base is version 1.09. And then for updates, you look down here and you see if these numbers match. If they match, you're good to go. If they don't, you can select your upgrade. Basically, you click on upgrade handle. Now, WinWin -win gives you directions saying you absolutely do not leave any other USB devices attached when you do the upgrade because it could cause critical failure to your hardware. I've also heard from other people that do it all the time. They leave everything connected. They don't have any problem. I accidentally one time seen an upgrade, clicked OK. I didn't unplug nothing, and everything worked fine. I guess it's just a feat. I guess they just say that to go above and beyond to make sure it's, you know, there's no chance of nothing happening. But everybody else that I've watched videos on that said they would do their upgrades, they don't unplug anything. They, they just go to town and never have a problem with it. So this last one right here is if you want to restore everything back to defaults. And that's only if you really, really mess up your um, settings. And it's pretty hard to do. You can see right here how it has each switch so we can look at there one through 44 switches 
So if you get to jump back and forth through the game and do 44 on each one of these, it, it can take you a little while. I found the download a blessing, and it was, it was awesome that they had that. You can go right back to testing, and that pretty much wraps it up. I just wanted to give a basic shot detail on what was going on with this, how to use it, how to get an update, and once you get that down, really knocks a lot off that learning curve. So if you have the hardware, you have this application, don't be afraid to use that. It'll be a big help. Okay, if you like this video, feel free to give me a thumbs up, a like, even a sub would be great. It really helps the channel. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, no problem. I always get back to everybody. It might take me a couple of days, but I always get back to everybody. So everyone, you stay safe. Weekend's coming up. Have a great weekend. Maybe catch you in the game. Oh, that's something I wanted to add in. I do have a squadron now. Well, it's, it's very small, just that now. It's called DFA Squadron. It's a private server for now. It will be public in, in a while because just getting the hang of using it. It's supplied by Fox 3 Solutions. I want to give them a thumbs up and a big thanks. Um, the, the owner, Luck, great guy. Helped me out the first day that I was on there. Got me all fixed right up and answered all the questions I needed on Discord. Really awesome experience. Okay, so that's going to about wrap up today. And we'll see you all around for the next video. Peace.